Today we're taking a first look at the Esker Jaffe. Esker is based out of Montana and this bike was assembled in Montana. And the Jaffe to me seems to be that perfect balance between a trail bike and a bike packing bike. It has so many cool nods to bike packing features, but the geometry looks like this thing is really meant to shred. There is so much to love about this bike. First of all, the price, it's $2,000. I know that sounds like a lot for a hardtail for a lot of people, but look at what's packed into this. Marzocchi Bomber Z2, Shimano Dior 12 speed with Dior cranks, 170 mil cranks, threaded bottom bracket, SDG dropper, Dior four piston hydraulic disc brakes, adjustable dropouts, quad butted chromoly steel frame that's ED coated. We've got some Shimano MT620 wheels. These are really interesting. They only have 24 spokes. I'm really interested to try those out. And it's built around 29 plus wheels and tires, which is awesome. I love 29 plus. I hardly get the chance to feature it on the channel, but if I was designing a bike, it would totally be 29 plus compatible. So that's a ton of features for two grand, but you also get an incredibly modern geometry. And that's super rare in the bike packing world. Most bike packing bikes have geometry from five to 10 years ago. Esker measures the geometry of this bike at 30% sag. So when the 120 mil fork is sitting at 85 mil. And at that sag, it has 66 degree head angle. That is super slack. It doesn't sound like it, but at static, when we compare it to most other hardtails, that's a 64.6 degree head angle. That is so slack for a bike packing bike. And I'm excited about that. That's right in the sweet spot where I like them. This is a size medium. It has a modern 450 mil reach and the chain stays are 425 to 437 millimeters. It's got sliding adjustable dropout so you could run it single speed. You can also slide it back to fit a 29 by 3.0 tire in here or you could slide it back just to get a longer chain stay to change the way the bike rides. One thing about the 29 by 2.8s, I tried to do some research on this rim, the MT620 but I think the inner width is only 30 mil. I need to verify that. But a 2.8 on a 30 mil really rounds the tire out. And it gets squirmy at low pressures and it wants to roll in corners, from my experience in the past. I wish this came with something like a 40 mil inner because I think that really fills out the 29 plus profile. At the moment, these look a lot like 2.6s. They don't feel like 29 plus. They don't look like they have a whole bunch of flotation. We'll see how they ride, but I would have liked to have seen a wider rim on this. I love the threaded bottom bracket. I like that it comes with 170 cranks. It seems like the last five bikes I've had in for review all came with 175 mil cranks, which is crazy to me. We've also got three water bottle bosses under here. I don't know if you can see that. So we've got three here, two here, two here and all these cable guides bolt on too. So you could technically get a custom bike packing bag that bolts through those. Personally, I think having all these little attachment points is a bit overrated in the bike packing world. There's nothing wrong with getting a frame bag with a strap on it. And even the ones that bolt in, they usually have a strap or two. So I wouldn't get too hung up on that. It's kind of a marketing thing in a lot of other companies. Esker's not doing that, but in a lot of other companies, They'll just put as many of these little inserts as they can so it looks like you can bolt more stuff on it, but that doesn't actually translate to usable stuff you can bolt on. Okay, I love that it's got a 64 and a half, 65 degree head angle, unsagged with the 120 fork. This was exactly what I was talking about in the video last year when I predicted the future of hardtails. That trail bikes and bike packing bikes would have a 65 degree head angle, would be based around a shorter fork, and they would still have a compact rear end. On paper, this thing looks incredible, and I applaud Esker. Someone put a ton of thought into this. It's one of the most progressive geometry bikes for bike packing and trail riding as well. This thing looks like an absolute blast. There's plenty of room in the fork. You could easily fit a 29 by 30 no problem in there, even with a wide rim. I don't have a ton of time on the Bomber Z2, but I have a lot of time on the Fox 34, which this was built after. So I'm really excited about this. I think it's the perfect 
balance of beef and lightweight for how this bike is intended to be used. It's got an interesting shape to bar. It looks like it sweeps back, has more back sweep than most bars. Although we're seeing a lot of that in the bike packing and touring world is a more comfortable bar because you spend so many hours in the saddle, you want a nice ergonomic shape. So I'm excited to try that as well. The welds, I would give them an eight out of 10. They're good, but not perfect. The paint, I would give an eight and a half out of 10. There's some bumpy spots back here on the dropouts. It's just not quite as perfect as some. But for a $2,000 bike, I consider this like a steel competitor to the Salsa Timberjack. This thing came in at 32.28 pounds, which is about on the money for a $2,000 steel frame. A lot of people think steel frames should be cheaper than aluminum, but it doesn't work out that way in the hardtail world. Steel frames are actually more expensive, especially a nice steel frame like this. This frame is quad butted. What that means is the inside of these tubes, they shave down so it's thinner in some parts. So the most stress on a tube is at a joint and some joints have more stress than others. So we want the tubing thick here. There's very little stress in the middle of a tube. So we don't need the thickness of that. So what budding does is they scrape out the inside and thin it down here. Quad budding means it has four different thicknesses along this tube. That helps the bike save weight in places that you don't need it. Because we all know that steel, while it does often have an incredible ride quality, it's heavier than aluminum. And you feel that in a lot of these bikes. So at 32.28 pounds, there are some things you could definitely do to lighten it up. Wheels and tires, stem and bar, um, saddle. These cranks aren't super light. You could, I think it'd be pretty easy to get this in the 27, 28 pound range, but that's not really what I would want to do for this. I mean, a light bike is great, but I want to ride it as is right now. This thing looks like an Explorer. It looks like it's not meant to be an XC weight weenie where you just fly up the hill as fast as possible. It looks like it's meant to haul your tent and your water and your food and just go out exploring for three weeks at a time. So I really like the fully external cable routing. It looks good. We got a little bit of a tight bend here for the dropper cable. Let's see if I can fix that a little. It's kind of tight. I just feel like that's kinking the cable. Maybe not. I do like where the cables are run. I'm glad that nothing's underneath the down tube. I hate it when they do that. The brake housing is right out of the way and the shifter goes up top. It does not have a chain stay protector. That'll be interesting to see. And the clearance is tight on these 2.8s with the dropout slid all the way forward. You definitely could not fit a 29 by 3.0 with them all the way forward. Although Esker says when you pull them back a bit, you do have room for a 3.0. Uh, it definitely looks like it down here in the chain stay. I wonder if the seat stay bridge would be wide enough. And I wonder if that's a 3.0 on these 30 mil rims or if it's on like a 45 mil rim. The Marzocchi Bomber Z2 is a 51 mil offset. It's a high offset fork. I don't usually like that. I usually prefer the short offset forks, especially with a slack head angle like this. But since it's only 120 mil long, I don't think it's gonna make a huge difference and I shouldn't feel that trail too much but I still think I'd prefer a 44 or 46 mil offset. We'll see, we'll see if I notice it and if I remember that it's a high offset fork. I promise to always be brutally honest in my first looks and my reviews. It bugs some of you, I know, because you might have this bike or you might disagree or you're used to watching reviews where they just sugarcoat everything and only talk about the positives and repeat marketing stuff back to you. That doesn't do anyone any, any good. You're about to spend two to $4,000 on a bike and you need to know if it's good or not. And I promise to tell you what bugs me and what doesn't. You don't have to agree with me, but I promise to always have integrity and tell you what I like and don't like about a bike. There are three things I do not like about this bike. Number one is this stupid water bottle bolt that prevents the dropper from going all the way down. This is a size medium frame. It has a 450 mil reach, which is perfect for me. It has a short seat tube, which is perfect. There's no weird gusset. There's no extra tubes up here, but I can't run the dropper all the way down. 
What that means is with the dropper in the lowest position and fully extended, it's too tall for me and I'm on my tippy toes to reach the pedals. So when I pop it up, it's, it's going too high. That means I have to settle for a 125 mil dropper and get a shorter dropper or just hope I always raise this to the perfect height that's a centimeter low. But the better option would be to not put a water bottle bolt here that interferes with the dropper. So if this were my bike, I would back this out and drill it out. It's not just the bolt, it's the insert that it threads into. So I would drill it out to get an extra inch of drop in there. Yeah, I'd lose a water bottle mount here. That's worth it to have a fully functioning dropper. The second thing I don't love, this has a 51 mil offset fork. I don't love it on paper. It may ride fine, so I'm holding judgment on that. But on a bike this slack, 64 and a half, 65 degree unsagged, I really like the shorter offset forks. They steer a lot better. And the third thing that bothers me about this bike is the rim width. For 2.8s, this should have a 40 mil at the minimum, and I would argue a 45, maybe even a 50 mil width to get that 29 plus tire to puff out and get the right tire profile. The rim's so narrow, that the tire folds in and these cornering knobs have come way down on the side. The, the rim's pretty peaky and pretty pointy. It's not big and floaty like you want on a plus tire. Now I realize there aren't a whole lot of options for 29 plus rims, especially at this price point. So I get it, but this thing measures closer to like a 2.6. These don't look like true plus tires to me. And uh, yeah, they, the rim should be wider for what it is. Continuing in the brutally honest theme, here are the things I love. Steel chromoly frame, quad butted, ED coated. They've coated the whole frame inside and out with this uh, coating that prevents rust. It's not just paint. So if you live in a high humid area, you don't have to worry about this rusting. Not all steel frames do that. I've talked to a lot of builders that charge 1500 to 2000 for a frame and they don't do the ED coating on it. So bravo Esker for that. I love the modern geometry on this. That's 64 and a half slash 65 degree, I'm estimating here, unsagged head angle. Beautiful, especially with a low travel fork. Built around a 120 mil fork, perfect. When this thing was announced, I was so excited when I saw the geo chart. Love that it's got a threaded bottom bracket. Love that it's got a nice modern 450 mil reach. I love that it's got a 50 mil stem. There's just so many good things going on here. I love the look of it. I love the skinny tubes. I love the decals. I think they did a really good job making this bike look classy. There's no weird swoops to it. There's no extra gussets here that don't need to be there. It just looks like a classic mountain bike. And I hope that when I get on it, it feels like a modern bike disguised as a classic bike. Looking at the geo chart, that is very possible. Esker, you knocked it out of the park. Whoever's designing this bike, you are the man. Uh, we're on the same wavelength. This is exactly the way I would design a bike packing bike for the future, and I think you did a great job. Cannot wait to get the dirt on these tires and try this thing out. Make sure you're subscribed so that you can get notified when I launch more Brutally Honest reviews, including a ride review on the Esker Jaffe. There's a party in the mountains, and you're invited.